The church is not a building. The church we are becoming. He actively loves God and loves people. It's large enough to influence a region. Yet small enough to touch an individual. It's relationally strong. And spiritually deep. It's a growing community. A multi-generational people. Who are inwardly caring and outwardly reaching to the world around us. It inspires ordinary people to be all they can become. And empowers them to achieve the extraordinary. Time to be a part of. An energizing community in which to grow. Is vibrant in worship. And powerful in word. Is God pleasing, people honoring. A house of generosity. Positively defies all expectations of it. And is renowned for going the extra mile. Speaks life, loves life, and gives life wherever it goes. This is the church we are becoming. Hey guys, welcome to this week's Scattered Sundays, being brought to you guys by Live Free. We are so excited to have you here. If you are new today, make sure you make yourself known in the chat. Make sure you spread some love, some positivity. Live Free, why don't you guys make yourself known as well? We are so excited that we can be here with everyone today. Kids, we have thought about you. So if you're wondering, what can I do? What's there for me? Go to tccskids.weebly dot com if you're age two all the way up to year six this is for you there are activities pictures coloring books videos from the team that are going to share stories and look at what it means to follow jesus so if you're at home sat in your pjs in your bed watching tv wherever you are on your floor on your kitchen why don't you guys take a picture show us what you're doing and Post it on your social media with a hashtag scattered stories. You know, because Live Free is bringing this broadcast, I've really been wanting to look at what it means to live free. What it is to be free. Jesus has called us to be free and set us free from our sins, from shame, from negative thoughts. He set us free from everything. And as we're watching this broadcast, I really, really want to encourage you guys to think about what it is to be free. Is your mind free today? Are you free to listen, to engage? Are you free to, to open your heart and, and actually get something out of this, what Jesus is telling you from these young people? Or is your mind elsewhere? Is your mind focused on other stuff? So I'm gonna pray now, and I'm gonna pray into um, what it is to be free. Dear Jesus, I thank you, Father, that we can be here today, that we can be here as a church family so we can grow and listen. And I pray as we watch this broadcast that we have open ears, open hearts, that you show us something in the familiar, that you'll teach us something in the familiar, Father. And I pray this in your name. Amen. You know, Live Free love to kick off with a game. So we're going to jump straight into a game. Lego. So you've heard it, we're doing a game. More on, more to come online in just a minute. Before we do, we just wanna say live free. We so love you and we honor you. We really invest in the next generation as a community. We, we believe that you are the leaders of today, not just the leaders of tomorrow. And so it's great to see what you've come up with today. And we, we so just so believe in your future. And we're so excited about what it is you're gonna do in the culture, in whatever sector and industry you choose to invest your life in. Big thank you to Kofi Afram, our youth leader, and all his team for making today possible and all the hidden things that you do leading our young people so well. Appreciate you. Put it in the chat. Just big up to our Live Free leaders. All of you know who you are. Name them and shame them. Encourage them for me. Okay, game time. Brilliant. Can't wait for this. It's going to be great. We got challenged by Live Free to play this game. It's called Speak Out. It looks weird and a bit scary. And it is, myself, Siobhan, Dave and Helen all have to say a line with this in our mouth and it's the first, the, the winner is the one who uh, the others guess first. But we want you to vote in the chat feed, vote. Who do you think said it best? Me, Dave, Helen or Siobhan. So here we go. Let's try, Let's try seek out. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> 
Inconceivable. What? Lego nuts. Lego nuts. <laughs> Inconceivable. We've got a guess or you're dripping, Ben! <laughs> oh, you're dripping, you mean! That's horrible! You're dripping everywhere! <laughs> Good job you brushed your teeth! Did he do that right then? <laughs> right! <laughs> right, he has perfect heat up. Like E F F. The B F F. Like E F F. D F S. Yeah, E F F. D F S. No, B F F. E T. D F S. B F F. Admit it. I run down like I <laughs> sorry about that. I won did not admit it. Yes. Yeah, I got you back. Big announcement. Are you ready? Sunday the 21st of June. This coming Sunday, it's not just Father's Day, wink wink, reminder, nudge, nudge. On Sunday the 21st of June, we are not just broadcasting once, but twice. That's right. We are gonna be broadcasting our gathering at 11 a.m. and 8 p.m. But not just that. We're not just broadcasting on online.church, but we are going to be broadcasting those times on our social media platforms. Oh my goodness, I cannot wait. The reason why we're doing this is because we're serious about Scattered. Look, we always said that we wanted to bring the gathering to you, didn't we? Right at the start of this lockdown period. Well, now we're taking that to a greater degree. We want to reach people where they are on socials so that we can take this community that love grows and serves serves right to where people are watching on their screens our opportunity has never been greater now we're streaming from now on 11 a.m and 8 p.m on online.church platform and on our socials but look we're stepping up i want you to step up too i'm asking you please invite two people from your world to join you as you watch online. That's right, two people. We're serious about Scattered, are you? So whoever they are, family members, friends, people on your street, 
Ask them to dial in. There'll be more information to come, but I encourage you, let's truly become a community that influences a region for the cause of Christ. I'm so excited. Let's go. If it's your first time joining us today, welcome to church. We're one big family that love, grow, and serve together. You can get involved, stay connected, and find out more by reaching out on Facebook. Hit the like button, like our page, and someone will be in touch. We'll even send you a welcome pack. Make sure you're using the chat feed to discuss and encourage. Enter a nickname, say hi, and be part of our growing online community. We believe in the power of prayer. Right now, there are people waiting to pray and stand in faith with you for whatever you need. Click the live prayer button to enter a private session with one of our team. The Bible says that those who refresh others are themselves refreshed. Hit the button now to give easily and quickly through our secure platform, use your banking app, or make it regular by setting up a standing order. Don't forget to register for gift aid if you're a UK taxpayer. You are free to give. 
And whichever way you give today, thank you. We exist for those who don't yet belong. Make sure you're sharing this message of hope by clicking the invite button on sharing on social media. We are one church in many scattered locations. Keep talking, keep sharing, and keep listening as we carry on with today's stream. Just as you guys are giving, I want to share a scripture with you guys about generosity. It's taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 8. And it says, A stingy sower will reap a meager harvest, but the one who sows from a generous spirit will reap an abundant harvest. Let the giving flow from your heart, not from a sense of religious duty. Let it spring up freely from the joy of giving, all because God loves generosity. God is more than ready to overwhelm you with every form of grace so that you will have more than enough of everything in every moment and in every way. He will make you overflow with abundance in every good thing you do. As I was thinking about this and reading over it, I thought about how I've given in the past. Has generosity flown from me? And sometimes, I haven't given generously or with a good heart because I've been too bothered about, you know, wanting to save for a car, wanting to save for the things in the shops, wanting to save for a present for someone or, or even for myself. And sometimes I haven't given generously at all. And I just want to encourage you guys, as in God will provide the rest. When you guys give generously from your heart, from overflow, God will provide the rest. So I just want to encourage you guys to give generously today. Today's scattered story is being brought to you guys by Compassion. Compassion is a charity that we support and they have made it their mission for all the young kids out there who might not have a great start in life to give them a fantastic start. Hi, today's Community Church. Justin here, CEO of Compassion UK and Ireland. On behalf of the precious children that we serve, I wanna thank you for your generous and committed support. I wanna encourage you that your support and prayers are making a huge difference in the lives of the children that you are sponsoring. Compassion supported children are registered at projects which usually meet at the local church. Across the 25 field countries that Compassion operates in, we now have more than 8,000 local frontline church partners that we work with to serve the most vulnerable children. And each is having to respond uniquely to COVID-19 induced restrictions. At this time, we are seeking to equip and empower our local church partners across the developing world so that they can meet the immediate critical needs of Compassion supported children and their families. This looks different in each community, and we've been inspired by the way that churches are innovating and adapting at this time. From teaching children to make face masks in Thailand, food distribution to families under lockdown in Honduras, to making hand sanitizer in Kenya. As you would expect, we are passionate about the local church. Local churches around the world, and also those here closer to home. We know you are also experiencing huge change and transition at this time and are having to adjust how you would normally do things. So I wanted to encourage you as you journey through this with a reminder of the promise that God will build his church, that you are in our prayers and we are praying that promise over you right now. We are so grateful for your prayers too, for our teams working hard all around the world and also for the precious children that we are called to serve. So once again, I wanna say thank you and God bless you. Give thanks for the good days to the frontline workers who risked their lives so we didn't have to. To the parents that became teachers overnight. To the sons and daughters and all our family who remind us what really matters. Give thanks for freedom, health and education. For warm meals and company with friends. For undeniable blessings. For when the music floods our soul and the worship flows from within, we give thanks. Give thanks for the hard days. For the, the anger that rises up the argument, the tears that express more than words from family. Give thanks, though the pain is overwhelming, our energy is spent, our spirit is falling. 
For in those moments, moments, his power is made perfect. His love is, is made evident. He becomes our strength, our comfort, and our salvation. Give thanks for the endless promises of a God who would rather sacrifice his own son than give up on his children. For with him, we are laced by faith, bursting with hope, driven by love, filled with overwhelming joy, patience that endures, and kindness in action. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good, his unveiling love continues forever. His faithfulness continues to each generation. For all things great and small, let us give thanks. You can drown it. Sweet embrace, lovely taste. I taste the seed and Monday grace, a place to be. It means I'll never need an umbrella. I'm a cool, I'm cold, and I'll always weather and never ever understand a man in the hands of great plans and stand a face and a life and never touches on my clutch front. Like what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the die for? This is no man, this is living. I like being given a gift in my living, and I'm a living today. So what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the die for? This is no man, this is living. I like being given. This is living now This is living now You take me higher than I've been before It's your perfect love that sees me so Got your freedom is an open door You are Good morning everybody, so before we continue in this time of worship, I just wanted to share something with you. So the Bible says, Great is the Lord, He is most worthy of our praise, no one can measure. So this song that we're about to sing, it's a declaration of faith. It talks about how God gives life and light and how He's the healer of broken hearts. Um, God, is, God is so much greater than our problems um, and once we give Him our problems, He'll make us feel whole and once we give him control, our chains are broken and we're set free from what we're in. It may take some time, but God's so amazing that nothing's too big and nothing's too small for him, and you can overcome anything. So let's sing together now. Great are you, Lord. Uh, 
Hey guys, I'm Kofi. I'm part of the Live Free team, and I hope you're really enjoying the broadcast so far. We like to have fun at Live Free, so I hope you've been enjoying what we've been doing. 
up to this point. And I'm gonna bring a message to you guys. I just wanna thank the lead team for allowing me the opportunity to speak to you guys because it's an honor and a privilege. And I've really enjoyed preparing this message. Live free, if you're in the chat feed, make some animal noises for me. Just encourage me as I'm bringing this message to you guys. So, I don't know how long you guys have been in lockdown, but for me, it's been around 11 weeks, a little bit longer. Um, and for some of my friends, they've been quarantined a few weeks more than that. But what if I told you there's a guy who's been locked down for over a year? You'd hopefully feel a bit of sympathy or empathy towards him. Uh, I wanna talk to you guys today about Noah. Um, so hopefully you guys can take some notes and you can follow along in the Bible tab or using your own Bible as we go through some scripture today. Um, I'm going to start out in Genesis 6. So in Genesis 6 verse 9 it says, This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, the only blameless person living on the earth at that time. And he walked in close fellowship with God Noah was the father of three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now God saw that the earth had become corrupt and was filled with violence. Sometimes we try and put Bible characters in the same category as fairy tales or just children's stories that we want to dismiss. But I want to remind us that this is a, in a biblical account that is about a man who had responsibilities, a human just like you or I. And he was walking in right standing with God. And when we look at verse 11, sometimes we view God through human lenses and we're thinking, why is he coming across so judgmental? But I wanna remind you, God is almighty, he's the authority and he's good. So what this reminds me of is God won't stand for injustice, he won't stand for corruption and he's looking to correct this and he's warning Noah and saying, I'm gonna send a flood to be corrective in this and I wanna protect life through you. So don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that COVID-19 and the season that we find ourselves in now has been sent by God as some form of corrective measure. In fact, later on, I'll be reflecting on this. It says that God promises never to destroy the world in the same way again. But Noah reaches um, a point with God where he's instructed to build a large boat. And God's actually rather specific in the building of this boat. And God makes a covenant with Noah. This is a next level promise and it's not based on the blamelessness of Noah, but the goodness of God. And he makes a commitment to Noah to protect life through him and he instructs him to build this boat. And we find ourselves in Genesis 6:21 And be sure to take on board enough food for your family and for all the animals. So Noah did everything exactly as God commanded him. So even before his lockdown, Noah was in right standing and he was obedient. And it's this that prepares him for his next season. He obeyed God and this is what holds him to what he's going to find himself in. So Noah gets his family, he gets the animals, and he's hopping on board the boat. And in Genesis 7 says, Take with you seven pairs, male and female, of each animal I have approved for eating and for sacrifice. Seven days from now I will make the rains pour down on the earth, and it will be for 40 days and 40 nights until I have wiped from the earth all living things that I have created. So Noah did everything as the Lord commanded. So this is the bit that we commonly know with the songs in Noah, bringing the animals two by two. But in fact, God gives him some specific instruction. And he's saying here that I'm going to give you provision, not only for eating, but to allow you to give a sacrifice in the midst of this. So even during lockdown, God's provision is sustained. And it says in Genesis 7-5, Noah did everything as the Lord commanded. Once again, just like in 6-22, 
Noah is being obedient. And it goes on to say, Genesis 7, 17, for 40 days the flood waters grew deeper, covering the ground and lifting the boat high above the earth. As the waters rose higher and higher above the ground, the boat floated safely on the surface. So here Noah is finding himself where he's dependent on God to keep him safe. And sometimes reflecting on our own lockdown, we've got to trust God that this is a season that will pass and that we will be safe. It's in the trying times that we find ourselves dependent and trusting on God. And I would hope that whether we're before, during, or after our lockdown, we're putting ourselves in positions where we're trusting the Lord. In Genesis 8, it goes on to say, but God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and livestock with him in the boat. So the flood waters gradually receded from the earth after 150 days, exactly five months from the time the flood began. The boat came to a rest on the mountains of Arat. Two and a half months later, as the waters continued to go down, other mountain peaks became visible. After another 40 days, Noah opened the window he had made in the boat and released a raven. The bird flew back and forth until the flood waters on earth had dried up. I don't know for you whether you feel like you're locked up with wild animals, but it says there in Genesis 8.1 that God remembered Noah. I want to remind you that God remembers you. You may feel forgotten or forsaken, but God, whether you know him or not, remembers you. And in fact, in the Amplified Version, it says, thought kindly of. I don't know in the midst of your lockdown, you feel like you've become stuck and you've landed on this mountaintop. Some of you might even be uh, looking out on this mountaintop and thinking, hey, lockdown's not so bad. I'm comfortable here now. The seas have settled. I'm used to it. Minimal social interaction. I get to work from home. Like, it's a pretty sweet deal. Can I get a holler from my fellow introverts? Oh, well, you just sat there quietly. Ah, I totally understand. Um, but wherever we find ourselves, God's not forgotten us. And we must remember that this too will come to pass. And in Genesis 8, 5, where it talks about these other mountain peaks becoming visible, in my mind, I picture how we're starting to see that lockdown is easing, um, the restrictions are lightening, but I wanna remind us, let's not get ahead of ourselves, let's not just become crazy and try and jump out and swim out to the next thing. We've gotta be responsible. And this is what Noah's doing, he's exercising wisdom by releasing the raven, and he doesn't just release a raven, he also releases a dove. And he's patient, he takes his time, and he keeps his faith in God, believing that the next season will come. So we come to Genesis 8:11, and it says, this time the dove returned to him in the evening with a fresh olive leaf in its beak. Then Noah knew that the flood waters were almost gone. He waited another seven days and released the dove again. This time it did not come back. And in 13, it says, Noah looked and saw the ground was drying, but waited another two months. And then God said for him to leave the boat. I absolutely love Noah's faithfulness to God and his belief in God. He's in this lockdown period for such an extended period of time, but what he does is he exercises wisdom, he's believing for the next season, and when God says it's time, he does and he acts. In every season, he's been obedient to what God's saying. And it goes on to say in 18, so Noah, his wife, and his sons, and their wives left the boat. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and there he sacrificed his burnt offerings, the animals and birds that had been approved for that purpose. So this is Noah after lockdown, and his first reaction is to give thanks to God. 
just like he would have done during the season and just like he would have done before the season. He gives thanks to God. And in fact, it says that this offering was a pleasing aroma to God. And so I hope that we find ourselves always giving thanks. So just as I close this out, I want to remind you that after this, God promises never to destroy things like this again. And he sends us the rainbow as a beautiful reminder of this. Noah was a man who lived in right standing with God, regardless of the season, whether it was before, during, or after his lockdown, after a world-changing event, after a life-changing event. The best way to live free in lockdown is to live in right standing with God. And in every season, he obeyed God, exercised wisdom, and gave thanks. We get to be in right standing with God, not through our actions, but through relationship. Just like Noah, we can be in close fellowship with God because he's given his son Jesus to be with us. And you may never have heard a message like this before. And so I just want to take a moment to welcome you into this, welcome you into relationship with God. And so we're going to say a prayer now, and I encourage you, say this out loud yourself at home. Pray this with me. Dear Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. Thank you for forgiving me. I'm sorry. I'm yours now. I'm free now. Amen. That is amazing if you've prayed that prayer for the first time, or maybe it's been a long time since you've been in conversation with God and you prayed that prayer, meaning it in your heart. I just want to say right now, you can see just above the chat feed that there's a button. Press that hand button to say that you have decided to follow Jesus today because we have a team waiting to pray with you. So if you press that hand button right now, the chat feed will go crazy. It's anonymous. We don't know who you are, but we will be celebrating alongside you. And if you hit that request prayer, then the team can be in a private chat with you and walk you through some next steps that you should take on the back of such an amazing decision. So just before we close out, um, I was talking to my fiance about this and she summarized it this way. He, speaking of Noah, he planned and strategized, but seeking God came first. Planning and action came second. I want us right now as we have this time towards the end of the broadcast to reflect on a question, I want us to reflect on the question, what do I need to seek God on in this time of lockdown before I walk out in the next season? So thank you guys for listening and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, Kofi, for that great message. It was so inspiring, so encouraging, something that we can all take away into this next season. If you guys did make a decision today, make sure you click on that hand icon, request prayer, so we know who you are and we can take you into the next steps of this journey. You know, why don't you guys follow us on TCC Life on Instagram or Today's Community Church on Facebook. And if you've enjoyed today, seeing our young people and what we do, why don't you give us a like on Instagram or Facebook at livefree underscore Wigan. Just as we close, we're going to reflect on a question that Kofi brought us. What do I need to seek God on in this season before I move on to the next? It was great having you guys. See you back next week. Peace out.
Thank you.